name is Simon, and I would like to welcome you to today's webinar brought to you by PFH, Private University of Applied Sciences. Today's webinar has the title of Study a Master's in General Management at PFH Private University of Applied Sciences in Göttingen, Germany. Today you will learn about the program and the dual degree options, about the university and its business partners, about the application, selection and admissions procedures, about the job guarantee policy, which I believe is a good news, about the fee structure and scholarship possibilities, also good news, as well as about the conditions for working in Germany during and after your studies, about Göttingen, one of Germany's most popular student cities, as well as about the student visa application. And telling you more will be today's two presenters. It's a pleasure to introduce two gentlemen today. Uh, first off, I would like to introduce Professor Dr. Joachim Arens, who is the Professor of International Economics, also the Vice President. And next to him, we have Stefan Zamit, the Program Manager, Head of the International Office as well. Welcome to both guys. Good Hello. Good evening to you. So perhaps just uh, to give them the idea, on our left we have the Vice President Joachim and to our right we have Stefan. And I'm sure that the audience that has joined today's webinar, a gentleman, would prefer to hear more from you. So just allow me to navigate to your presentation and without further ado, pass the floor on to you. And you guys should be able to take it from here. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Simon. That's uh, a lot we have to talk about, uh, but that's why we're here. So we'll do our best to take you through the program with all the information that you require to uh, help you make your decision. Um, as uh, Simon has already uh, mentioned, we'll be looking at um, a short introduction of uh, the university and its background, and we'll be explaining a little bit more about uh, activities on campus uh, Göttingen. And then we'll, we'll move on to the concrete program, General Management Master of Science, and then, of course, uh, to important information about the application process, the selection criteria, and uh, the way admission works at PFH. And, of course, uh, very interesting, uh, very important information for, uh, for you, uh, working and living conditions in Germany. And any questions that we haven't addressed uh, during the presentation itself, we'll be able to uh, discuss uh, during the Q&A session. So, allow uh, Professor Arns to start with some information about uh, the university and, uh, and its background. Right. Thank you very much for being here uh, and visiting PFH uh, uh, tonight. Um, I, I welcome you heartily to uh, to this university. We are one of the oldest private universities in Germany, uh, located in the middle uh, of the country. We had been uh, celebrating right now, or a couple of years ago, uh, our 20th uh, anniversary. So we had been founded in uh, 1995. Um, we are a non-profit organization, and we are fully accredited and state recognized, of course, uh, in Germany and throughout uh, Europe and uh, globally. Um, we engage actually, or we are engaged in campus studies and distance learning programs, one of the very few universities doing this, providing all our university students the advantages of both kinds of studies. Although tonight we talk about a campus study program, namely the, um, um, the management, the general management program. Um, our teaching methods are really innovative. And uh, what's most important of all this is that the philosophy of the um, of, of this university is that we pay individual attention to each applicant and each student and each graduate at any time. Um, we are very much um, into uh, practice-oriented uh, activities and um, we are theoretically founded as each university but we place very high emphasis on practice orientation and this comes or does not only show uh, in the classroom but also when we look at excursions, at field trips and of course at internships uh, and, and the job guarantee we will uh, talk later. Um, and you, it also shows in close cooperation with business and um, industry uh, partners. Um, the university itself um, um, has uh, offers uh, programs in management, business administration, but also uh, that's not so important tonight, uh, but in general for your information in engineering, composites, psychology, orthobionics, healthcare technology, uh, we are very much um, uh, supporting students if they want to start their own business. Uh, we have a center for entrepreneurship and also center for healthcare technology, helping students to um, realize their own business ideas. 
and combining that with their education. Um, we are a small university. We uh, have 3,000 university uh, students, 2,500 in the distance learning programs and uh, roughly 500 in campus studies. That means that our classes are really, really small. Um, they are actually um, run by more than 30 uh, professors, uh, more than 50 instructors. 10% um, right now of all students on our campus are international. Um, and um, our class size is really small with uh, a cohort of say 15 or 20, the most 25 in the master's level. Uh, and this is broken down into even smaller uh, groups in uh, certain electives or in uh, language uh, uh, classes, for example. Uh, we are proud of 6,000 graduates and um, we are actually in contact with them, which is also important for our current students who may build up contacts into this alumni network. Um, also, we um, um, have uh, partnership operations with uh, 37 partner universities worldwide on basically all continents. And this also results in a few double degree program or double degree uh, options available, possibly also for you at the master's level. Um, we can talk about that later if you are interested in that. Here you see um, our uh, board of trustees. Uh, basically, we cooperate with more than 500 companies in Germany and beyond. But these uh, companies you see here are our closest um, um, company allies, if you wish. They are on the board of trustees helping us to further develop uh, our programs according to the standards and expectations of the business sector. And when you go through this list of companies, you see small and big companies, startup companies, family companies, tax companies. Uh, you see companies which are um, uh, which are in the airline industry, which are in tourism, which are in healthcare technology, which are in IT. Uh, which are in accounting. Um, so we uh, are in contact of uh, to many companies. And if you are looking for internships, of course, these companies are available, but also many other companies. And we usually uh, seek to connect our students uh, with our company contacts so that it is uh, facilitated for students to, 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 to find and to get into uh, an internship or a placement already during their studies. And you may already know, or you will uh, learn it later, that our master program in three semesters also provides the opportunity to uh, go for a placement anywhere in the world with these companies or others uh, of uh, up to six uh, or even eight months. Um, I mentioned the individual attention and innovative, innovative teaching methods, including uh, digitalization. Um, um, we have an excellent lecture to student ratio, meaning that uh, all professors know all the students by name um, because uh, student groups are so small. Um, we engage with students individually. We meet with students bilaterally. We have group work. We have workshops with very small numbers of students. Um, class size is between five and 30. I mentioned before the cohort in the master's school or master's, uh, master's class will be certainly around 20, 15 to 20, uh, but in some classes uh, it's even smaller. Lectures are therefore always interactive. Students ask questions. There are discussions all the, um, all the way through, uh, through class. Uh, there are many tutorials, experimental games and case studies. Uh, we have excursion seminars and workshops so that um, all students are being uh, promoted, supported according to their own um, needs to their own wishes to improve, further improve students' strength and uh, to overcome uh, existing weaknesses or uh, deficits. Um, and of course, at the master's level, scientific work, academic work is important. It's not only practice orientation, although this is certainly um, at the center of our education, but of course, all the work we do is scientifically guided. And uh, this is what you will also learn and learn to improve your skills um, from an instructor to an independent approach so that you can successfully pass your master thesis and in the end do independent work also for companies. Um, you find more information here, some of which I already mentioned. 
uh, you can specialize in uh, various areas in the master's level. And uh, Stefan will uh, tell you more about that in a moment. Um, uh, we do not only have uh, professors coming here to teach, but also experts from practice, from companies, from German companies, but also international companies who give talks, uh, who uh, um, guide students through project work and also sometimes supervise final thesis um, if students choose to uh, do them in cooperation with companies. Um, we helped um, to find placements and uh, we help with our career service for mediation with companies. And uh, of course, we invite companies uh, several times a year in springtime and also in the fall to come here to our university campus to present themselves in workshops and career forums, offering internships, but also jobs. Uh, for national and international students. And um, of course, our faculty is becoming more and more international because we invite uh, visiting professors from international partner universities and other lecturers. Um, and I think I pass to uh, Stefan right now, who uh, will talk a bit about uh, the general management program you're interested in tonight. Uh, perhaps first a little uh, bit about the history of the program, uh, which uh, we, we the, the English version of which we launched uh, last October. We've been running this program very successfully, pretty much from from the beginning of uh, of, of this of this university, um, and so far in this particular um, program in general management, uh, we have around seven hundred alumni. Um, and uh, we we've had this job guarantee in place for a while, and um, the, the job guarantee and perhaps I'll, I'll say a little bit more about that later on, basically um, guarantees that if, if uh, graduates, uh, students who finish their studies uh, in, in the regular study period um, get 20% of all their fees paid back uh, if they do not uh, succeed in finding a job within nine months after completion. And so far we've only had to pay back uh, this, this, uh, this, 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 these 20% um, seven times. So out of 700 alumni, uh, only only seven didn't have a job uh, before the end of these uh, of this period. Uh, most of them had it by the end of that year, and in fact, uh, around seventy percent of all graduates actually have a job offer before they even uh, finish their studies. So when we came up with uh, with uh, this this decision to to launch the English uh, the fully uh, English taught uh, version of of, of this uh, masters, uh, we uh, we were poised to to guarantee the success. Um, also in uh, with international students, uh, of course, uh, thereby being careful not to neglect uh, one very important factor, which is which is language, uh, which is also why we strongly recommend that students uh, already take um, perhaps an intensive German language course before they come uh, to Germany before the program starts, which will facilitate matters when when students eventually start looking for internships and especially if they intend to pursue a, a career or to gain some work experience uh, after completing their studies. So the focus is uh, very much on sales management and international marketing. Um, I will show you on a, on a slide uh, in, a, in a minute exactly which courses we will be focusing on. Um, it's, uh, as we already mentioned, it's, it's a, a fully re recognized and accredited Master of Science in General Management. Uh, it consists of 90 credits. Uh, in Europe, we call these credits ECTS. Uh, so it's an 18-month program. That's the regular study period. And intake is possible in October 2017 or also possible in April 2018. We have a very high degree of flexibility uh, with over 50% of the program, which can be... Um, which can be covered on a very individual basis. Uh, many, of, most of the electives themselves uh, are uh, are not very flexible in the sense that uh, they're, they're they're compulsory courses. Uh, but there are three projects carrying each eight credits, and the final thesis with its defense, which uh, carry twenty three credits, that makes a total of forty seven ECTS. Uh, and that uh, is equivalent to more than 50% of the program, that can be done in a very individual way. So, for example, we've had one uh, student who uh, wanted to focus on food and agriculture business, agribusiness. Uh, this is not one of the electives that we offer within the scope of the master's program, but we do have expertise in, in the form of a professor who also has his consultancy, his own consultancy in the area of food and agribusiness. So she uh, was uh, planning to do 
these projects uh, via um, project-related uh, in internships within this area and thus also um, in, in this way uh, sharpen her, her profile according to her specific preferences. So this is one very big advantage of, uh, of this program. Um, here is an overview of the courses that you would uh, be, be taking. Uh, this overview gives us uh, the uh, picture of the courses um, starting in October 2017. So we will be focusing on executive management uh, and with then the main specialization areas being sales management and international marketing uh, and then entrepreneurship in, in summer. Uh, and again, a, continu a continuation of the focus areas, sales management and international marketing. And of course, the, the course is also complemented with, uh, with uh, workshops on uh, negotiations, for example, or presentation techniques, and especially something which um, students appreciate, uh, um, an introduction in, in the German job market and very individual coaching as to um, you know what you, what uh, your your CV is expected to look like, what what do uh, German employers want to see in, in a CV, um, what what should the cover letter contain, and so on and so forth. So the requirements uh, are a bachelor's uh, degree of uh, 210 ECTS or an equivalent qualification. Very importantly, is the the business science focus. Of course, language requirement, uh, students who have completed their undergraduate degree in English uh, will be exempt from providing further proof. Uh, otherwise, uh, the usual internationally recognized certificates uh, would do. Uh, we very often uh, international uh, bachelor programs or bachelor degrees are equivalent to 180 credits, uh, which, which is an issue which is not an issue really, because uh, many of, uh, of our students in the master's program uh, come with, with similar bachelor degree programs. Um, so uh, we have various possibilities to make up for these missing 30 credits, uh, 10 of which, for example, can be recognized uh, for um, work experience that uh, graduates, that applicants have already been able to, uh, to gain um, either during their studies um, but not within the scope of their studies or after their studies. Um, and that usually leaves around 20 credits. And uh, this is possible uh, to, to cover without having to extend the, the study period. So it would still be an 18 month uh, study program via German language courses, uh, um, which we also offer as, um, as optional uh, courses or, or for example, uh, taking uh, other bachelor courses even connected to the areas that you would be focusing on in your master's. So, for example, uh, you could take uh, uh, a sales management class in the bachelor's course, which, of course, will have uh, many similarities with the master's course that you would uh, be, be taking anyway. But let, let me add here, um, you are not supposed to take any bachelor courses which you had taken in your own bachelor studies before, but you can also um, choose bachelor courses um, which... Um, you are simply interested in. Uh, so um, it uh, does not make a difference whether you take a bachelor course in marketing or in innovation management or in personnel or in cost accounting. Uh, that would be your choice and uh, we would uh, be prepared to guide you uh, through this. And uh, also, um, um, if there are uh, any ECTS or credits missing when you come to join our program, this uh, to get them will not necessarily mean that your studies will become longer. Uh, so you can still do it in 18 uh, months. And if you manage to do this, then uh, it also means that uh, the costs are not going up for you uh, because this is being provided by the university for you in order to prepare you for the master's program. Which uh, brings us to the application process. We have a rolling application system, so no deadlines. Uh, of course, we always have the issue with uh, the visa application, which is uh, the, the main restriction. Uh, we have an online application, so you, you visit our website and fill in the online application, after which you receive a confirmation. Um, and, uh, and you will be asked to send your supporting documents uh, to the, um, the, the email address, which you can see on, on this slide, and you'll also be notified exactly where to send this, um, this, the, these documents. Uh, the most important ones, of course, are a, a cover letter, your CV, 
uh, the university entrance qualification, your transcript of records or your mark sheets or whatever you like to call them. Um, so further documents are also required, but there's no need to, to touch on them right now in detail. Um, we are, are usually reply within a week, uh, at, at the latest within 14 days. Um, we then conduct uh, an interview, usually via video conference, depending on the country in which you are currently located. Um, and we also require applicants uh, to, to sit uh, a short uh, test at, a, at the closest uh, institute, usually a good institute. Um, many of, of our applicants have already been in contact with the, the, the closest good institute because they have perhaps already taken a German language course. Um, and if not, it's a nice opportunity to, uh, to, to get to know uh, the, the institute and, as I mentioned, uh, follow our advice and perhaps already take uh, take a course there in preparation for your stay in Germany. Um, this is not the sort of test that you, you can prepare yourself for. It's not a, the test that you need to prepare yourself for. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a general um, test which, uh, which assesses your, your re reading comprehension skills in English. Um, for example, it would be an, an, an essay or an article and you'd have to answer a couple of questions. So a typical uh, reading comprehension and, and, and perhaps a case study and you'll be asked to answer a couple of questions related to that case study. As I said, nothing um, that you, you need to uh, be wary of. Um, after, after this, we, we send, uh, if, if the assessment is positive, we, um, we send a letter of, uh, of offer, which is a study contract basically. Um, and then in order for the university to issue uh, the confirmation of acceptance, uh, we require the applicant to, to sign this contract um, and uh, to send it back to us uh, along with the payment of the administration and registration fees, um, which uh, are um, amount to 940 euros. The tuition fees themselves, they do not need to be paid until uh, the actual uh, semester starts. So the next, and as I said, a very important step would be the visa application. Uh, it's very important to start the process as quickly as possible. Uh, sometimes it, it takes weeks until, until you actually get an appointment at the embassy or at the consulate. So uh, we strongly recommend that uh, you, you get in contact with uh, the visa point and, and check out exactly what, uh, you know, what the, the circumstances uh, are. So this is uh, an overview. You can perhaps look at it uh, later on when when this uh, um, is, is sent to you uh, via um, via email. Um, as I said, the application itself uh, doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't cost anything. The the um, supervision, the proctoring of the the aptitude test might cost anything between fifty euros and one hundred and twenty euros, which applicants would need to pay the institute uh, directly. Um, and, and as I said, the only thing that you would need to uh, pay before receiving the confirmation of acceptance is uh, the, uh, the registration and the administ administration fee. The rest of the fees uh, are due um, at, at the beginning of each semester with a, with a 1,000 uh, euro examination fee at the end of the program when you apply for or when you register your, for your master, uh, master's thesis. So, uh, working in Germany, uh, you, as uh, Professor Hans uh, mentioned earlier on, you have the possibility to, to work uh, for up to 10 months in companies within the scope of, uh, of this uh, degree program. So, these, the three projects I mentioned earlier, you have two months uh, available for each uh, project. Um, two months between the first lecture period and the second lecture period, perhaps a little bit longer, let's say 10 weeks. Uh, and then the next, after the, at the end of the second lecture period, uh, you would have uh, four months available entirely for, for an internship, for a, a second project. Um, uh, and you could also continue, uh, so you can remain within the company or perhaps start another internship and write your thesis together with the company. That depends very much on the sort of, uh, on, on the area in which you would like to uh, specialize. Uh, it depends on, uh, on, on your, your specific expertise um, and, and on the type of uh, master thesis that you would like to, to write. Um, uh, it's, it's doable. We recommend it. Uh, we strongly recommend it, in fact, because it's a wonderful way to establish, uh, to establish contact with, with a company that perhaps uh, will also uh, offer a job once you complete uh, your studies. 
Um, and it's a very practical and hands-on possibility to uh, to develop very practice-oriented uh, um, expertise, which after all, uh, after all, that is what we aim at, which is uh, to make our graduates as uh, employable as possible. So the advantage of uh, having six out of these 10 months uh, declared as compulsory uh, internships um, is that uh, you that companies wouldn't be obliged to pay the minimum wage. Now, uh, some companies are willing to pay a remuneration to give, to offer students remuneration for these internships. Uh, some don't. The shorter the internship, the less likely it is that the company is willing to pay for it. Uh, but the advantage of of this being, as I said, declared as an as a as a as a compulsory internship means that they are not uh, bound by law to to pay that. That makes it easier. To, to get internships in the first place, and you need no special work permit uh, for for these sort of internships because they are they are compulsory. So those are the advantages. Uh, beyond that, uh, general regulation in Germany has it that you can, as a student, you can work up to 120 full full days or 240 half half days. So uh, we already mentioned the. Uh, the the possibility to work uh, with within a company for your master thesis. Um, we provide a lot of support with uh, with regard to finding internships. We do not guarantee them, uh, but uh, basically every student uh, manages to find internships. Um, we we guide the students. We accompany students in the process, uh, and and we make sure that they have the the required knowledge. Uh, in order to uh, to to find uh, to do what it takes to find these internships, but it is ultimately the responsibility of uh, each and every individual, each and every student, to find uh, to find these uh, these placements. So this is important that uh, it is clear uh, we help, uh, but it, it won't be enough to 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 just wait and see uh, what happens and 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 uh, you know the jobs will will fall into your lap. That's not the way it works. Um, part of being employable is knowing how to go on about finding internships, uh, building up your professional network, uh, knowing how to how to 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 present yourself to potential employers uh, and so on. Okay. Uh, but but for this we we also provide uh, training activities, as you uh, can read on the slide, uh, job application training, coaching. Um, especially for the German job market, but also the European job market. So uh, we do the framing. So we provide uh, all the conditions within which you can choose your job, your internship, you develop your personality, and uh, this will help you to qualify, to be successful, to get an internship. And very many of our students actually go from their last internship, from the last long internship, directly onto the job, uh, because they have already found the company and the company has found the new uh, the new person uh, whom they want to whom they want to recruit and they have to got to know each other so that this is really being facilitated by exactly this smooth mechanism built in the master's program at the end of the master's program especially so students are well advised to take time uh, already in the first semester to find a first job or a first internship in the short a uh, break of eight or ten weeks between the first and second semester, and then you have uh, you have gained some experience. So you you go for the long internship in in the third semester. Uh, you may combine if you wish this with your master thesis and succeed in the job market. And um, of course, you can also go uh, for jobs and internships in your home countries, in any country in the world. But we will also make sure that you are well prepared for European or German job market? Um, perhaps we can, you might have questions with regard to, to these projects and to, and to the internships uh, in the Q&A session, so um, we'll leave it at that for now. Uh, you're welcome to, uh, to pose your questions uh, via the Q&A uh, chat button, um, which Simon explained. Uh, earlier on. Um, with regard to work permit after you complete your studies, once you graduate, once you receive your, in, your state recognized and fully accredited master's degree in general management, you are entitled to staying in Germany for another 18 months. 
Um, and, and these 18 months, you can either be working throughout the entire period or you can be looking for a job. And um, so the 18 months are entirely at your disposal to look for a job and to work. After that, it is possible to, to remain in, in, uh, in the EU, um, for example, via a blue card, which is uh, possible in, in business if you do not have an IT background, and uh, which is unlikely considering this, 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 uh, this program. Um, you would be required to earn a gross uh, um, salary of 50,000 uh, euros per year. Is this realistic? Yes, it is. Um, again, we have to be honest over here. We, we cannot guarantee it. Um, it 50,000 is very much the threshold uh, at which uh, most master's uh, graduates uh, start, very much depending on the industry in which one enters. Automobile industry pays well. Um, engineering in general uh, pays well, but it's it's something that we would uh, need to uh, look into on a very individual individual basis. Very important, the German language skills. Of course, time is is our main constraint. Uh, you're you're here to you would be here to to do your full time study program, and at the same time, depending on how good your German is when you come to Germany. Of course, you would also like to focus on improving your German language skills. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, we provide various opportunities for you to be able to take intensive German language courses. But of course, you can't take an intensive German language course if you're doing an internship. Mm -hmm. So again, th this is always a matter of looking at your individual profile. What, are, what is your expertise? What are your advantages? Uh, what sort of industry will you be working in? Uh, do you have certain advantages which perhaps uh, others uh, do not have? So you, it's not so important for you to, to speak perfect German or at least uh, to have an intermediate uh, level of German. It's all very individual and that is something that we definitely guarantee it is this individual attention and the individual uh, um, guidance in the whole process of becoming employable and gaining work experience uh, on the German market. This brings me to the last uh, point on our agenda, which is uh, getting in itself. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm the best person over here to <laughs> tell you a little bit more about getting in. Uh, Thank you. Um, it, um, in, in fact, Simon already mentioned that uh, Göttingen is a lovely, uh, traditional, uh, most popular university town in the middle of the country. Actually, as you can see, nothing is really far away from Göttingen. It's very close to Berlin or to, to Hamburg, to Munich, to Stuttgart or Cologne, yeah, even to, to London or Paris or Rome. It's not really far. The next airport is um, only one hour, 20 minutes away. So it's really fast. So we can connect easily on the ICE, the fast speed trains throughout Germany and across uh, uh, Germany and uh, into other countries. Um, <coughs> The, the city itself is, uh, is a typical uh, medieval um, uh, a university town uh, with 30,000 students all together with three universities being located in this city, in a city of uh, 120,000 people. So it's really a young city and each fourth person is a student and many of the others work for university. So many people have academic relations. You can do a lot of things in the city. It's, it, it's young and that means, uh, well, it never sleeps in a sense. It's not Berlin, of course, uh, but therefore it's much cheaper. And uh, the ways, the distances are really, really short. So wherever, uh, whatever you do, you can see actually uh, the cost of livings as we assess them. And uh, with a total of 800, you can get along really fine in a city like Göttingen, whereas in big cities such as uh, Berlin or Munich or Hamburg, Paris, Rome or Moscow, it would be much, much more expensive. Um, going back, um, um, we have a, a tradition of a lot of research and development institutes, Max Planck institutes. We are proud of more than 40 Nobel Prize winners in this city. So this already shows this long academic uh, university tradition we are proud to be a part of. Um, there are many uh, high-tech companies, uh, especially in measurement technologies, automotive supplies and bionic mobility. That means there are even placement and internship opportunities here in this city or in this region, but also, of course, beyond uh, in Frankfurt, in Munich, in Stuttgart, in Berlin, in, in many other places. And the uh, excellent infrastructure makes it easy to go back and forth. 
Um, I mentioned already, and you can have a closer look by yourself, um, um, the costs of living, which are relatively small in this uh, small city. And um, the city is uh, so um, small in a sense that uh, even if you are new, um, you will uh, make friends very quickly. And if you go into the city, um, you walk, you take the bicycle, um, nothing will take you longer than 15 to 20 minutes and immediately you stumble into a person you have known before, uh, you have met before, you make friends easily and uh, you can go out uh, uh, to the restaurants, to the clubs, to, uh, to the museums, to concerts and to all kinds of other cultural attractions. And uh, what is more, uh, PFH actually sponsors um, um, train tickets, not all of them, not for the fast speed trains, but many train tickets in the northern part of Germany. And the PFH also sponsors its students um, cultural tickets here, here in Göttingen to uh, have an enjoyable uh, leisure time after uh, long study hours, of, uh, of course. Um, this would be it for now. Um, thank you uh, very much for your attention. I see Simon, uh, who will take over as the moderator. And I guess uh, if nothing is to be added, uh, Stefan, we can go to uh, the Q and A session. Yes, maybe perhaps just 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 one last uh, one last point, which we perhaps did not specify earlier on. Um, th out of these thirty thousand students uh, in in Göttingen, that's one fourth of the population. Three thousand of them are international. Um, and the advantage, right. as as uh, we already mentioned, as a student of PFH, you have you have all the advantages of being a student at a very small university uh, with uh, around 300 students on campus in Göttingen, plus another approximately 200 students in, in, in our other campus in Stade, um, and, and, and all the advantages of being in a student town with so many students and all the facilities um, which cater for so many students. So all the cafeterias are, are at your disposal with, with very student-friendly uh, uh, rates, so very, very cheap, but high-quality food, um, and so on and so forth. The dormitories are available for PFH students as well, the libraries, the sports facilities. So PFH students actually combine the advantages of being taken care of individually at a small university with all the big advantages at a large university just next door, actually it's across, uh, it's across the street. We're collaborating very closely with the University of Göttingen so that our students can take advantage of uh, many facilities over there. Now we can go to the Q&A session. Stefan and Joachim, thank you very much for that uh, in-depth presentation. I believe that you actually included all of the necessary information in the presentation itself. But for our audience members, we've come to the Q&A where you guys can submit your questions by typing them in through the appropriate Q&A panel, which you should be able to find to the right side of the platform now that we are out of full screen. And actually, as we wait for the first question to roll in, uh, perhaps we can open a poll uh, and ask you three short questions. Uh, if you found this webinar useful, uh, uh, how sure are you that you will start your studies? Uh, actually, in October is what we're asking. Very sure, sure, not sure. Perhaps next year. Uh, and how long do you plan on staying in Germany after you complete your studies? As you can see, multiple choice answers shouldn't take you uh, more than 30 seconds to fill it out, and your feedback would be much appreciated. Just make sure to click on that submit button once you've finished uh, answering in order to finalize your answers. Otherwise, your efforts will be lost. Okay, uh, we leave the poll running throughout the Q&A, and having said that, we do have our first question submitted. But Stefan, you wanted to ask me something? Uh, yes, I was, I was just about to say, uh, while we're waiting for the first uh, question, um, with regard to the dual degree options, um, we we do have a number of very attractive uh, um, study uh, program offers uh, with our with our dual degree partners, um, it, but it's very specific, and every program has has got its individual characteristics, its individual advantages. Uh, triple accreditation, uh, sometimes increased uh, costs are involved. So we would like to ask the participants over here to contact us um, if they have uh, in a specific. Uh, um, need for, for information about the dual degree programs. We can also gladly send another presentation uh, document with more information about uh, these uh, these dual degree programs. But it would just have been too much to, to discuss all these options um, in this short presentation. Thank you very 
very much, Stefan, for sharing that information. Uh, and in fact, we have a similar question from Emiliano as well as from Ramon, uh, both regarding scholarships. But uh, mm -hmm. Emiliano's is a bit more specific. So uh, he's from Venezuela, currently working at uh, PwC as a tech experience uh, associate. And the question is regarding the scholarships available in the PFH, uh, uh, i.e. how much do they cover? Uh, we we have a, a small number of uh, partial scholarships, so no full scholarships, unfortunately, um, and the, the, the so-called Deutschlandstipendien. Um, the, we they're usually granted once the students have completed the first semester. So it's based mainly upon it's made, based mainly on on performance. Uh, so the the best. Uh, criteria in that case would be the results of the first exams um, and it, it it covers 300 euros per month for one to two semesters so we always strongly recommend that students are in a position to to be able to financially support themselves uh, uh, during during the study uh, program uh, not <coughs> least because it's a very intensive program and um, it, it, it would be unfair to give students the impression that they could, uh, you know, perhaps work part time to finance their studies. And um, it's uh, it's a lot. It's advisable to really be in a position, in a comfortable position, to focus entirely on your studies without having to rely on on uh, full scholarships or or, or working uh, to finance the studies. As a, having said that, working part time is doable. Many students actually do that and perhaps earn two, three hundred euros a month. Uh, which 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 helps them, of course, uh, you know, get get by. Uh, but um, unfortunately, no scholarship, no full scholarships would be available. Well, uh, we may add though that um, applying for the Deutschland Stipendium, and we have another one. The uh, we call it the Niedersachsen Stipend. So we have a a, a few uh, stipends which could be made available also for international students coming extra for the for the master's program. And while Stefan said that usually we expect students to uh, be here at least one semester to uh, show uh, what they can do and how they perform. Um, if there is an applicant with very, very good marks um, and uh, an, an excellent CV and, and, and uh, um, a good track record in practical studies, uh, this student, of course, can submit his or her application and with it also an application for scholarship. And such a scholarship may, uh, it's not an automatic, uh, automatic mechanism, but it may actually cover up to 30% uh, of uh, the study fees. Um, so we cannot promise because it's competitive, of course, as usual. Um, but students, if they are good enough, if they are very good, they can even uh, apply for scholarships before they start their semesters. And... Uh, uh, I would highly encourage good students uh, to do exactly that. I hope that answers answers your question. Uh, I believe, uh, in fact, that it does. Thank you very much. And I would like to make a call to action to our today's audience. Uh, if you, there will be no further questions submitted. Uh, that means that we will be wrapping up the session shortly. But to give you some more time, uh, perhaps I can come up with a question of my own, which would be as simple as uh, if there are any uh, German uh, language courses provided by the university. Can they learn German while they study? Yes, it is. It is possible. We offer um, accompanying courses at uh, at the moment. We're offering two two levels, uh, one at beginners level and and one at uh, lower intermediate. Uh, so A1 and then A2, B1. Very small classes. We have, I believe, in one of the classes we have around three or four participants. Um, so, but but it's 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 twice a week. Uh, you know, it's not really something which will drastically improve uh, the language skills. What we recommend uh, is that students come in September, for example, um, if they plan to start their studies in October, then to come in September and to take um, additional uh, courses at our partner institutes at a very low additional cost. So, for example, a six-week intensive German language course at our partner institute, uh, which will be from Monday to Friday for six full weeks, uh, from nine to one, uh, that's 450 hours at, excuse me, no, excuse me, um, 155 contact hours for 450 euros. That's an average of three euros per hour. 
and it's uh, extremely helpful. This is what really um, advances students in, in, in their learning language process. And, and, and also during the, 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 the lecture-free period, students can also continue taking these courses um, and they get 50% of these fees refunded if they complete these courses successfully. So that makes it even more attractive financially. Thank you very much, Stefan. And in fact, we do have a follow-up question from Emiliano regarding the German proficiency. Uh, his concern is, uh, how likely is he to get an internship if his not native, if his native language is not German? As, uh, as, as we mentioned, uh, it depends very much on, on the expertise. For example, we have uh, certain areas uh, in which uh, German language skills are not necessarily required, especially, for example, uh, large companies or consultancies like KPMG, um, they wouldn't be able to get an internship, for example, in the tax department, uh, but in, in consultancy and IT uh, services or IT related services, of course, uh, this is indeed uh, possible. Um, it is uh, some, very often uh, the, the working language would be, would be English, uh, but employers still like to to see that the, the applicants or their prospective um, employees, uh, interns, will be able to get along also with, uh, with, with their colleagues, also in, in, in German, to be able to understand certain documents which are perhaps in, in German. Um, it is doable. It's a, bit, uh, it's a bit difficult. It's more difficult, definitely more difficult than if the student has, um, has some good German language skills. Uh, but it is possible. But, but we may also add that uh, students uh, who study in Germany are also eligible to apply for internship in any country in the European Union, uh, including all those countries in which English um, is an accepted language. And this is not only the UK, which may actually uh, exit the, the, the EU, but also Ireland. Uh, but we may also add countries such as the Netherlands or the Scandinavian countries like Denmark, Sweden or, or Finland, um, uh, which uh, have a lot of uh, English speaking uh, uh, jobs and uh, jobs for, for foreign students um, also coming from a German university with a foreign uh, nationality. This shouldn't be really a problem. Uh, you are not restricted to internships in Germany. Uh, there is an increasing number of internships available in Germany for English-speaking students. Um, very often they require or they expect students to learn slowly but steadily and to further improve German. But of course you can also go and we would uh, actually assist you in doing that and, and support you um, to find internships in other European uh, countries. and. Uh, you may know Europe is uh, not such a big continent. It's not that big as Latin America or Asia. Uh, so distances are really short and within a, a one hour or two hour flight, you are in Sweden or you are in Denmark or in Netherlands and you can easily uh, find English speaking uh, jobs and uh, internships also there. Or, or for example, in, in Spain, uh, if, if uh, we actually support students also financially, we have various programs, for example, the, the, the Erasmus program, which might be familiar uh, with some of you. Um, you can apply for scholarships, for Erasmus scholarships um, of up to 300, uh, 340 euros, if I'm not mistaken, at the moment per month. And that is irrespective of whether it's a paid internship or not. If you do an internship, for example, of at least two months in, in Spain. So uh, these are also attractive, uh, attractive opportunities. Um, having said that, most, most uh, students are interested in gaining work experience here in Germany. Uh, but we always say uh, it's important to, you know, to keep as many doors open as possible, um, because uh, especially if German language skills are, are lacking, of course, that it's, it's, it's useful to use this time during your studies to improve your German while at the same time try to use as many channels as possible to, to still gain work experience. It's, uh, it, it's not easy, you're juggling many balls at the same time, but uh, there are many hands helping you keep the balls up. Thank you very much once again, Stefan and Joachim. Uh, and uh, seeing that we have no further questions, it seems that it is then time to wrap up today's webinar. 
Allow me to thank our audience firstly for joining. I hope that this session was informative. Moreover, I sure hope that some of you end up applying and even better being admitted to the PFH Private University of Applied Sciences. Uh, thank you for your attendance. And of course, a special thank you to today's two presenters, Joachim and Stefan. Thank you very much for your time being this uh, early in the morning uh, and uh, actually providing such useful information uh, in the Q&A as well and in the presentation itself. Perhaps any last minute closing comments before we say goodbye? Just a very big thank you on our behalf. Thank you for making it after a day's work. Uh, I guess in most uh, in most cases, uh, it would be a pleasure to to help you in, in in the application process and and in everything that follows that. Yes, thanks for organizing this event and thanks for visiting PFH uh, uh, tonight. And uh, we'll be glad to be in touch with you uh, shortly with uh, more information and asking or answering all your questions if you have some. And thank you to you too, Simon. All right. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye, all of you. Thank you very much. This time to all of the participants. This is Simon signing off by wishing you guys perhaps a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening from wherever you may be. Thank you for watching and goodbye.